You know, it's amazing how good modern cars have become. Because if you drove this and then got into a 240Z, you go, uh huh. Yeah. It just seems rattly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I drive old cars all the time, so. To me, I, it's sort of second nature, but of I have friends that, you know, hey, can I drive your car? And they go, oh, I don't really like it. The, you got to press awful hard on the brake. Well, <laughs> well yeah, that's not, it's not a power brake. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, they're just so used to the modern convenience. And just how linear the power is, it really just feels very nice. Yeah, it feels good under the foot for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a car I can have a good time by myself. Oh, easily. And you get to row your own gears. Yeah. One episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car featuring today 2023 Nissan Z, the successor, of course, to the great uh, 240Z of the early 70s. You know, I'm so glad to see this car. I'm very excited because this is a sports car that's attainable. We do an awful lot of P1 McLarens and the, you know, the new Ferrari. You know, those are all great. Hypercars are great fun. But in terms of just day-to-day -day driving, uh, this is, is what I like. It, it's got 400 horsepower, V6, and as I said, it's a real sports car. And you know, I, I credit Nissan for building this because let's face it, you don't make a lot of money selling two-seater cars. If you want to make a, a four-seater crossover or some kind of SUV, you'll sell 100,000 more than you will of these. But the fact that they have the dedication to do this and they're uh, they've got this heritage now. You know, it's funny, back when I was in high school, uh, the big thing about uh, Japanese cars, well, they have no heritage, not like Triumph or MG or Porsche, you know, because they were new. But now they do. Now they've got 50, 60 years of heritage uh, to look back on. And you see a lot of the original 240Z in this car, a lot of the cues. Something that's really cool, I'll show you how I'm into this, how into this car I am. Uh, Ten years ago, I went to Japan. Uh, and I met with Mr. Nakamura. He was the head designer at the time. And I wanted to find out, are they ever going to build another 240Z? It's sort of secretive, but he took me into the, uh, <laughs> into the design studios. We met the designer who was sketching a car. It looked a lot like this. I mean, it's fascinating. It takes a long time to uh, build a car. The gestation period is pretty crazy. And plus, you've got to sell the idea. No, it's only got two seats. Because, well, you know, if you're a bean counter in a car company, you want four seats and you want luggage and, you know, handling and performance kind of take a step back when you're just trying to sell a lot of automobiles. So I love that they remain true to the original idea of the original 2240Z. But I, I, before we show that tape, I'm going to bring in a gentleman from Nissan who is, uh, knows a lot more about this car than I do. Jonathan Bueller. Jonathan, come on in. Good to see you. Yeah, good You're to see the you. head communications guy? Yes, I am. Uh, okay. And you know all about the car? I do. See, this is because good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks for having um, me. So this car comes with a nine-speed automatic or a proper six-speed manual. Or a proper six-speed manual. Six manual. That's right. What do you find? Because, you know, whenever I talk to automobile companies, they say everybody says they want to stick and it's less than 10%. Is it more than that with this? So we do find that this skew is actually quite probably 40, 60, oh, with 40% to manual, 60% right. to automatic. Right. And that's really just because of the base of enthusiasts right. that are obsessed with Z. They and let's, really... let's be honest, the nine speed automatic is faster than the six speed. I mean, there was a time when yeah. the, nothing was faster than man, you know. <laughs> You know, whether it was trains or whatever, you know, John Henry, all that kind of stuff. But we've been here now where machines could do it a lot better, a lot quicker. You lose a lot of the soul of the car, I think, with it on a back. But if you're purely just racing and going fast, the, you know, that, that a nine speed is pretty good. You probably get better mileage too, but yeah. it's not as much fun. Yeah. And I see you've very wisely brought me a six speed today because I didn't really. I, I know what automatic. I, I know they're great. I know they're better than I am. Okay, thank you. You know, so I, I like I like having a proper car that I can just go out and enjoy. Because you know, I don't race people on the street, but I race myself. You know, I point. I enjoy driving, and sometimes people pull up and they want to race. I go, no, I don't want to go to jail. I'll lose my <laughs> TV show and you know, but, so I so I, I like a car that I can really have fun in, and that's what I enjoyed uh, about this thing. It's really really terrific. They'll be in, they're in the dealer showrooms about now. Uh, so, yeah, here towards the end of this summer, right. of 2022, uh, you'll definitely see these out and in the dealerships. Okay. And this is the 23 model. Okay. That's correct. Was it hard getting this to production? Was it a hard sell with, 
with dealers because dealers like to sell crossovers and SUVs. And well, from I, a dealer point of view, they actually were excited. Oh, good. As good. soon as we announced that we were bringing this car into production and that we were going to have a next generation Z, they were extremely, extremely excited. So in our dealer meetings, the a round of applause that we got when we showed, you know, the, the initial sketches of this was absolutely crazy. And that kind of cemented the fact that this was something that we knew was going to be great and we knew we had to do. Right, and it's a halo car. Exactly. But it's an affordable halo car, which is a halo car, if you're not familiar with that term, something that brings people into the showroom. You know, uh, we bought a 64 Ford Falcon because I took my dad in to see the new Mustang. I knew he wasn't going to buy the Mustang, but I just want, I thought maybe it'd make a shot. So he said, well, give me that. I'll take that one there. That's got four doors. You know, so, so, we, so we got a Falcon from my mom. It was kind of funny. <laughs> so that was the same thing. And it makes, it makes the lineup exciting. It yeah. does. It really does. So this, this really plays well with our complete lineup, where you have GTR as more of the numbers car, you know, the, the car that really kind of stands out from right. a performance-oriented point of view. And then you have the Z, which really plays to kind of the enthusiast base who's looking for, as you were mentioning, something fun to drive, something to enjoy, something to row your own gears and really, you know. Well, I'm more excited connected. about this than the GTR because the GTR is so over the top yeah. to, to me. I mean, it, it's a great car, sure. but in terms of affordability and having fun and, and using as a regular car, you know, that's what I like about this. Yeah. I mean, the Miata became. I mean, the Miata was really a well-built Lotus is what it was. They, they took Lotus's idea and built it properly, and it became the biggest selling sports car in history. Absolutely. And the 240Z certainly right behind it. Plus, the other fascinating thing about it, it was the first car built, I think, in Japan specifically for the American market. Yeah. I went to Toyota and let me borrow the uh, Toyota GT, the one that Sean Connery. Yeah, the 2000 GT. Yeah, right. the convertible. <laughs> it wasn't a convertible, but Sean Connery couldn't fit in it, so they cut the roof off it. And they gave it to Sean Connery. He drive this in the movie, you know. That's right. And they let me drive. Then it was great. It was great. I mean, I'm, I'm in it like this, and I, I got my shoe off, and I'm using my big toe to hit the gas. But it was just so tiny, you it know. Was, yeah. Whereas this, plus, as I say in this video you're about to see, it had rolled up windows. Oh my, which seems almost silly now, but. In the early 70s, you still got British cars that had the plastic windows you had to stick in, and you had to <laughs> assemble the top with the manual, put you know, clip A into clip C. Yeah. So it was really, really pretty cool. Pretty cool. And this is probably closer to the original 240Z than anything oh, absolutely. in between. Yeah, so what's really unique about the Z um, in front of us is that this was very heavily influenced by the 240, as you mentioned, right. as well as several other generations of Zs. So you'll notice in the rear, very reminiscent of the Z32 300ZX from the early to mid-90s, uh, especially with the taillights. But of course, this front end is just Z 100%. 240Z, uh, you know, minus the front bumper, you know, could essentially be this. Yeah, and you've got so many rules and regulations that didn't even exist in the 70s. Headline, right. I mean, they stopped building the Ford GT, not because it wasn't popular, but because the new regulation said the headlights had to be, I think, two inches higher. Exactly. Uh, okay, yeah. so you've got safety things. And plus, this has every reasonably conceivable safety item, which was never, you've got the you, you know, stepping out of lane. Yep, so warning, lane departure warning, yeah. blind spot warning, forward yeah. emergency braking with pedestrian detection. So all of the key safety features that you kind of want. And honestly, blind spot warning is amazing in this considering, you know, the small three quarter window. Right, right. But uh, yeah, ultimately you as a driver are completely safe from an active safety point of view. Okay, uh, so it's a V6. V6. Uh, Twin turbo. Is it a new V6? So it's a delineation of what we've had packaged in the Infiniti Q50, Q60 right. Red Sport. But more horsepower. But Well, same horsepower as the Red Sport version. Oh, okay. Um, so 400 horsepower was standard on that. But what is different about this is that um, it's tuned specifically for this packaging. Um, we've added a recirculation valve uh, on both sides of you know, the banks for the turbos. Uh, to, again, keep the responsiveness up, which you will feel, uh, especially while driving. So that cuts down on turbo lag. Correct, yeah. Right. So it keeps the, uh, you know, the, the turbo spooling uh, by recirculating it back into the intake side. And then on top of that, though, we also added a speed sensor and its own designated gauge. So the center pod 
on the top of the dash indicates the speed that the turbos are working, which is really unique because now what that's doing is allowing you to see how effectively those turbos are spooling, not only to provide responsiveness, but also to provide you know, some really cool feedback. Let me ask you a question sure. about, because when turbos first came out and you were driving hard or wherever, they would always say, idle for a minute to let the oil circulate mm -hmm. to cool down the turbo. You know, because what would happen if you shut it off right away, the oil would just sit there and cook. Cook, yep. Yeah, and just, earn, you know. I guess, do you still recommend that, or is that, are they pretty much solved They're that They're so problem? efficient now yeah. that, yeah, you know, no need for a turbo timer or, right. uh, you know, to set an yeah. idle for a little bit. But it's probably good after you push the turbo oh, yeah. to just let it... Let the car cool down. Let, let it cool down a little for bit. For sure. Okay, yeah. very good. Uh, and the car's brakes, obviously four-wheel discs all the way around. Correct, yeah. And so for this particular trim level that we have in front of us, Jay, this is a performance trim. Mm -hmm. So this comes with the Acubono brakes, which are the four-piston caliper front, two rear, uh, designated by the, the red uh, calipers themselves. 14-inch rotors in the front, again, providing a lot of great braking power for that spirited driving or for just daily usage. Right. And, and for Z enthusiasts, they'll also notice that these are very similar to the previous generation, uh, both the 370 and the 370 Nismo. So these, uh, with this entire package, provide a really great braking performance. Yeah, it's fun to see the Japanese versions of classic European performance, names like Brembo, whatever, you know, and, and then rather than go to them and use their brakes, they develop their own, and it gives it a Japanese spin, more of a sure. uh, Japanese feel to it, which I think is really fascinating. Uh, let's see what else have we got. Um, electric power steering or hydraulic? So yes, we've now moved into the electronic power steering realm with the new Z. So before it was uh, you know, just a traditional hydraulic rack, uh, but now we've moved to EPS, and that's really to, to do two things. First is to provide uh, a lot better driving feel, so maybe that's something that you'll be able to find. Sure, it might not give you the, the best amount of feedback, because obviously, as we all know, hydraulic is where it's at. Right. But uh, this EPS was tuned specifically by our engineers to ensure really good feel um, and dynamic control, but then also allow us to put those safety features that you had mentioned before right. to ensure that you know not only are we keeping the customer safe, but also providing a top-level performance. And also, electronic doesn't rob horsepower. Hydraulic will rob horsepower. Essentially, not yeah. much, maybe five or ten horsepower, but yeah, it's it's minimal, every, but um, every little bit counts. Well, let's open the hood. Let's yeah, please. See. How do we do? It? Am I right? Am I right? You're on right. This? You're in the right spot there. Okay, here we see. Oh, here we go. I mean, the days of the engine dress-up kit are gone. You can't buy the chrome valve covers with the chrome air cleaner now. You get the optional giant sheet o plastic that goes over <laughs> the top, but that's okay. I love the brace here. Well, that's a massive looking brace. That looks really strong. That almost looks like an aftermarket piece. It, it really does, but coming from the factory, this is actually really key for the structural rigidity additions to the new Z over its previous generation. So yeah, you'll see this uh, adjustable strut tower bar here, um, which is, uh, again, playing to the strengths of, of what we wanted to do for not only the Z, but for our enthusiasts who own these cars. Yeah, I mean, the smart thing about buying a package, you get the whole package. You know, a lot of times people will find an older car, Japanese, American, whatever, and they put a bigger engine in it, but they, you just can't strengthen the chassis. It's, it's made for yeah. 125 horsepower, and now it has 500 horsepower. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you wind, you know, it's like, a, it's like a, a, a wire coat hanger. You do this enough times, and, and it's going to break, you know? Right. So you have these massive braces here, which really work. And this is not a light car. This is what, about 3,600 Yeah, pounds, right at around 36 in this trim. Okay, because you've got to have all the safety features and all those kind of things. Correct. Uh, but 400 horsepower, I mean, it's funny, when the, when the Nissan, when the first 240Z came out, I don't think you could buy a car with four. There was no car with 400 horsepower, no Ferrari, no nothing. That no. was like no, exactly. crazy. I think the Dodge Viper of the early night was the first, oh my gosh, 400 horsepower, you never see that again. You know. What else have we got here? Oh, you got your... Uh, yep. Fluids so, are under here. Yep. So we've again? got our access to our, our braking and our clutch uh, master cylinders there. The battery costs over there. Yep, of course. But as you mentioned, yeah, we've got this, uh, this engine cover. Uh, but what it's covering are the two heat exchangers on right. top of the engine. Um, and then, yeah, down below, obviously, the turbos. And then they just cycle back through, uh, you know, the, the bottom side of the car, which, of course, then houses either the six-speed manual right. or the nine-speed auto. 
And what's also unique, Jay, about this particular vehicle that we have here, uh, so the performance trim level comes with a clutch type limited slip differential now. Okay. Oh, it's, it's, it's a mechanical pack? It is a versus, mechanical okay. pack. So oh, before we've had a viscous, um, yeah. but we had some overheating issues as well as some unintended locking. So. Uh, we've moved now to uh, the mechanical to really give you. That. Well, I like that. You know, yeah. I've got an old '65 Shelby. It's got a Detroit locker, and every time you go around a corner, it's like somebody's breaking a chicken leg. It's like, <laughs> yeah, crack. What, what was that? What, what was that? What, what's yeah. that? What, what broke? It was literally like just, just like a huge crack. Yeah. I actually, get used to it. It's actually kind of nice. Fun. <laughs> so, well, I, I like the fact that they've made it a performance car and not a luxury tour i mean it's a true sports car yep. but it's got air conditioning and uh, the safety features and all that kind of stuff too. exactly and like you say uh, you don't make a lot of money selling these cars the real money is in the suvs i mean porsche showed that it, sure. you could sell maybe sixty thousand cars a year and that's it how many people really want it or can use a two-seater car right but when you come out with the panamera and all the other ones okay that's where you make your money right and i love the fact that nissan uses its suv money yeah, to, 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 build to help it. on this, yeah. Well, no, I mean, you know, but you have to talk about a product. If, you, if you're trying to make money, what's going to sell? Well, that, I'm sorry, that's going to sell more than the other. I like the fact that Nissan has the enthusiasts in mind and takes the effort to develop and, and build it. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah, it was, it was key for us. As you mentioned, like Heritage earlier, you know, it's something that we really want to, to focus on and ensure that we deliver. So it was, it, it had to be done. I mean, you cannot have... Gotcha. You cannot have a you know a lineup without the Z, and so it was imperative for us to ensure that we delivered this to our. And here's something: I, when I buy a car, I was looking. At, I just like the shut lines here. Yeah. I mean, they're all equal. It doesn't get wider. You know, a lot of cars will really get a little wider here, and it it, it changes. Yeah. You know, it's 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 pretty amazing. I love the gauge pack. I love the the hooded covers, that's always something I thought was kind of cool. That just harkens back to the original Z. Exactly, I yeah, mean, those three gauge pods have been in our Z since the inception of the Z. It, so. is, it is so hard to make a modern version of, an, of a vintage car or you know an iconic car, sure. because you can't, there's things you can't do anymore. You can't have doors that open this way, you can't <laughs> have, you know, just all those things. So pretty, pretty amazing, uh, very nice. And where is the, how do you open the back? Do you need the fob or you have it? No, so it's really unique. Uh, it's right underneath the Nissan badge. Okay. So you just, uh, you know, open it from there. So it's hidden, but it's still there. Okay, but pretty good cargo room, especially for a sports car. Yeah, I'd say yeah. so. Yeah, ample cargo room. You yeah. can fit two golf bags in here if you so inclined. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, <laughs> that was what I loved about that, the C Corvettes, the, I guess, C5 through, through seven. Yeah, yeah. You had that huge area. You could put two by fours in there or sure. something. You know, yeah. so that's pretty good. Nice. Go to the store, yeah. <laughs> you know, as I said 10 years ago in the video you're about to see, they asked me my favorite part of for the design, and it's always right here. Oh, you and me both. This, this is my favorite part. You know, when you wash a car, this is the most sensuous part right here. <laughs> I know I sound creepy, but that's okay. No, and, absolutely. And I said, I hope, I hope they keep that. So. Mr. Nakamura was taking notes as I spoke. Um, we're gonna take this for a ride in just a second. But first, I thought you might get a kick out of this video I, I did in Japan 10 years ago. I am wearing the exact same clothes I am now. No, so we're here at the Nissan Technical Center. And this is one of those kind of top secret rooms you really can't get in unless you know somebody. Well, I happen to know the chief creative officer, Shishiro, he's been to my garage, and an excellent musician, by the way. <laughs> excellent bass okay. player, you gotta hear him play. These creative guys, they do a lot of stuff. Now, the rumor is, to celebrate the 80th anniversary of Nissan, the 240Z might be coming back, is that a possibility? Yeah, next year is 80th anniversary right. for Nissan. We would like to bring something celebrating our heritage. Well, this is the first generation Fair Lady, and the one you saw me drive, it had those wheel arches tacked onto it and a few other things. This is a car in its purest form as it left the factory. And boy, it's a really timeless, good looking design. And I'm surprised about what a, such a big car. You know, most of the Japanese cars that I've driven from the period, the Honda 600 and some of the little, they're almost toy cars, they're very small. This is a real car designed with American roads in mind, wasn't it? Right, at yeah. that time it's a 2.4 liter, but right. six cylinder is a big car right, for right. Japanese standard. You know, to me, the first generation is always the purest. This is my favorite. This one, not so much. 
These two didn't do much for me. Like this, like this. And this is possibly the future. This one, this is closer to this than any of these are to that. So it's fun to go back to the original sort of style and shape with obviously modern. Well, here are some more interpretations here. Yeah, this is uh, some of the sketch we use for uh, today's right. Z. And even, you know, this has already the spirit of a 240Z. When your designers design, do they just design, and then you go back later and go, or do you tell them all the rules and regulations before they start? They are doing sketches without any restriction. Okay. Just right. pure imagination. Pure design. Yeah. Yeah. And then after this stage, we have to ask them to create on the package. Right, okay. So, which means the safety regulation, the right. size of the engine. So how much thought goes into even something as simple as a gear shift lever, all the different interpretations. I gotta go with... Uh, Which one? Uh, I just, I'm just kind of old school. Just yeah, the, no, I think actually... The ball is, fits yeah, in yeah, the yeah. palm of your hand, that seems so. When I look at some far out concepts you have up here, I see a lot of original 240Z in there. And this here, obviously using modern, <clears> what, 21 inch wheels <laughs> or 22s, those yeah. are pretty big. This is interesting. And this one too, I was talking before, I thought a split window would look cool. I thought, I like a split window. I don't, I don't review every Then you're the week. school teacher? No, 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 once a month. And I don't come too often. <laughs> I give them more you know, time right. to think about. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, you, you, you love 240Z. Right. Which part do you, do you like best? I love this curve. I mean, to me, this, this part, when you wash the car, this is the coolest part, right? I love this right all up in here. This is, I think, and I think the front end is really good too. I love the practicality of that. I mean, this was, there was no sports car in the day, except maybe Corvette, where you could do this. And you could actually go on a trip and carry something more than a pair of gloves. I mean, that was the great thing about it. I always liked that. And I like this window here. You don't realize how well this window is designed until you see one that's done poorly. You go, oh my God, that's horrible. But something as simple as a window, you think, well, how much thought can go into it? But that, just that little shape. Jay, thank you very much for your insight for 240Z. I will give you our young designer yeah. to help work together for 10 minutes. Ten, designer 240Z yeah. in 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Well, how hard can that be? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jay. Hi, and my name's Taro. Taro, how are you? Nice to see you. My favorite part on that car there are the rear haunches, the way... Give me a, something with a high coming off that roof. Uh, okay, oh yeah, okay. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, I like having the, the rear come up and flow, you know. I, I like having the, like sort of rear haunches, you know, where the, where the rear is higher than obviously front. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks nice. That looks nice. Not that I have anything to do with it, but it looks good. And I like the rear deck treatment yeah. here. Yeah, a lot of cars don't feel, fill out the wheel well yeah. perfectly, yeah. and that always looks bad when it's that bad. Yeah, it looks kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, wow. Look at that. I could never draw that. It takes an <laughs> artist to draw that. It's like buying a suit. You tell them what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like if you're gonna have a, a retro kind of shape, it should have exciting new things on it. LED lights, yeah, you know, yeah. something. The, the basic shape is so pleasing, you know. Very cool. Yeah, roof's probably a little high in it, but yeah. eh. But you're the artist, but thank you. Thank you very much. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Very exciting. Thank you very much. I, I see why I'm not a car designer. Thank you. Very cool. Well, you see how it's done. And uh, if the new uh, 240Z looks anything like that, I should be getting a royalty check. Isn't that correct? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to have the big mirrors on the fender? Yes, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video on how automotive fashion has not changed in the last decade. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to take this for a ride, Jonathan and I. Come on. I'm anxious to, to get it on the road.
I like a car where you can use all the power all the time. All the time. That's you know. Right. I mean, I've got some supercars, and I enjoy them. Yeah. But sometimes you go, nah, 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 I'm in jail. What happened? I, I, why are the cops around me? <laughs> right. You know. You know. Uh, I won't say we'll keep you away from the cops, but uh, I will say though that this does have a very linear power band that you can utilize. Well, I enjoy this. Is I said a million times. It's what I love about. I've got a, a '63 por Porsche Carrera too. Yeah, yeah. And I enjoy watching the tack make its journey to 7,000. Yeah. You put your foot in. I get on my P1 and I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm going 130. What happened? Yeah, you know? exactly. It's <laughs> so quick. Boy, it almost sounds like an aftermarket exhaust system. Well, so this is actually a prototype Nismo exhaust that we've got on it fitted. Oh, okay. Um, but this would be optional. This is something that you could go to the dealership and buy right off the shelf. Okay. And have fitted to your car. It's still uh, EPA legal and everything? Yeah, it would be carb approved. Yeah. This thing just loves to, to rev out. So it's, uh, especially, um, you know, when you get into the boost and you really let it rip, it's a good time. It's so funny because back in the day there was nothing smoother than a straight six. I think BMW led the charge with those, the big CL coupes and everything. Oh, yeah. And they were turbine-like, just amazing. Yep. And I guess they always say like an, a six is better balanced and all other kind of stuff. Sure. I think Victorio Yano was the first guy to make a V6. The first guy to ever have a V6 was the Lancia Aurelia. That was the first V6. That's right. Yep. And you know, and then everybody kind of jumped on the bandwagon, but. I guess just with modern technology, all those old kind of sort of rules don't really apply anymore, you know? No, they don't. And, you know, as an enthusiast myself, you know, and having once owned a, you know, a 240Z, uh, um, and my wife has one as well, though, what's really unique about those is, yeah, I mean, we've had generation after generation, but we've kept with the six cylinders, regardless of whether it's right. an inline six or a V6. So that consistency across the, you know, the entire generation span of Z has always had a six cylinder. Well, it's funny because the V8 thing is uniquely American. Very true. In yep. Europe, the six was the big engine. True. Yes. And the four was the base engine. And, you know, I've got that Maserati um, 3500 GTI there. That's a twin plug head, three and a half liter six. And it's funny when you read the road tests from 1962 is what mine is. And the road tester says why anybody needs a car with 220 horsepower <laughs> is beyond me, but I'm glad they did it because right. it's great, you know. Well, yeah. And you realize, you know, now you've got double that. You've got 400. 400, yeah. yep. Boy, turbo kicks in nicely. <laughs> Doesn't it? It really does. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really nice. You know, the fun thing about a great car is it appeals to everybody from all walks of life. You know, I'm exactly. like when the yep. Mini came out, the Beatles, Twiggy, rich people, the royal family, <laughs> and laborers, they wanted a Mini yeah. just because it was so cool. It really had no, the class wasn't based on how much it cost. Exactly. And that's what's fun about this, you know. Yes. I mean, I like Pagani's and all those kind of cars. They're very nice, but nobody can afford them, really. So yeah. you're not really moving the bar forward this you've raised the level of everybody up in terms of performance and handling and what you can do with a car you know exactly. just the whole egalitarian nature of the whole thing yeah it's definitely accessible and that's always been a key for z i mean it's always been the accessible sports car so from its inception with the 240 all the way through each generation it's always been something that could be attainable it wasn't something that was out yeah. of reach you know miata z yep. corvette it's a car if you work hard you might not be a gazillionaire, but boy, you can aspire to have something really nice. Absolutely, you know? exactly. That's, so that's what you know. You know, it's amazing how good modern cars have become. Because if you drove this and then got into a 240Z, you go, ah, uh -huh. yeah. It just seems rattly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, I drive old cars all the time, so to me, I, it's sort of second nature. But of course. I have friends that you know, hey, can I drive your? Car? They go, oh, I don't really like it. The, you gotta press awful hard on the brake. <laughs> well, yeah, that's not, it's not a power brake. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, they're just so used to the modern convenience. And just how linear the power is, it really just feels very nice. Yeah, it feels good under the foot for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a car I can have a good time by myself. Oh, easily. And you get to row your own gears. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned, you know, getting out of something modern into something, you know, that is of the past. Right. And you really get kind of a, a more visceral experience just because of all the sounds and everything. 
Yeah. This though is it's very tame and quiet, but then the exhaust and. But I'm always amazed at how foreign vintage cars are to younger generations. That's you know, point. having grown up with it, it's interesting. But I hear young enthusiasts say stuff like, "That car seems kind of dangerous." I never heard anybody say dangerous when you're driving an old Cobra or something. You know, they're not thinking about. No. You know, car guys are pretty much. You know, they have the thing. I'm never going to get an accident. No. Yeah, that's you true. Know, but then you have a generation now that sort of grew up with all that. True. Oh, this, does this have an airbag? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I never ask about airbag. No. Uh, I was in the same position. Uh, I, I heated all of that out the window when I learned that I could, uh, uh, you know, obtain my dad's 240Z. And uh, when we restored it together, you know, we had to make sure that it had harnesses and that it had a. Uh, know a did, half cage in it did your dad buy it new so he uh he actually got it from the second owner or for the from the first owner so right. he was the second owner right. in ojai california so he was stationed uh at the naval base there in port magoo and, right. and so he uh, he picked it up up there in the hills of ojai and then drove it 380,000 miles and then parked it wow north of atlanta uh when i was eight and then when i turned 15 we started the restoration together and uh that solidified the love of z for me oh that's um, pretty cool yeah and then now uh you know i'm living out the dream talking to you about the new z here uh is with your Nissan. dad still with us yeah he is yeah oh, that's great yeah, so he's uh he's still a big car enthusiast as well and he's tickled pink that uh you know we get to bring home a new z for him to to try out so, i mean like it oh he loves this thing yeah, yeah. so it's yeah it's just a fantastic full circle experience um but um yeah, this, this new Z is just something special, which I'm extremely honored to be able to, to bring it to you. And does the nine speed have paddles up here? It as sure well? does, yeah. yep. Uh, and then a uh, fun note on that, those paddles on the, the nine speed automatic are the same as you get on the GTR. Oh, okay. So, uh, so for any GTR owners who pick up a Z, yeah. they'll have the same paddles. Right. Something you never had in the old car. Well, mirrors that weren't vibrating. <laughs> the cars in front of you, you, you would always see this. You couldn't read a license no, plate. You right? couldn't see anything, yeah, you especially with the... Uh, <laughs> some sort of blur, you know. Yeah, it's just a, a little figment back there just scooting around. Because cars have always been fast. It's just handling, stopping, and reliability. That's where that's where all the, the change are. I mean, even in 1900, people were going 60 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, of course. Miles, you know, it's like... Yeah, but you're absolutely right. But the more speed, you know, brakes is uh, definitely very important. And it's fresh to have a car, you don't rip the splitter off every time you pull in the gas station or driveway. That's a great point as well. It's amazing how turbo lag has almost been virtually eliminated. Yeah, agreed. And for all intents and purposes, it pretty much is. Yeah, especially with this, that was a key goal, was to eliminate that lag. You know, we didn't want it, you know, really catching you know, at 3,000 RPMs, so. Uh... Go ahead, we can. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, you don't want it to catch, you know, at 3,000 and then take you up to red line, you know, you really want that responsiveness down low, which, right, you know, right. that recirculation valve as well as, you know, more responsive turbos really play a key role in this package. It's funny, you know, when the a Porsche Turbo came out in 79, mm -hmm. it had 240 horse. And they wanted to ban it. There was talk that it was too much power. People couldn't handle it. Oh, wow. I mean, it was peaky the way it came on. It I was going to say, like, as soon as it hit, it hit, right? Yeah, and then you just sort of do a little bit of a fishtail, and then you, you straighten out again. But. Right. Didn't that car have a nickname, the Widowmaker? The Widowmaker, yeah, yeah. Because, uh... Throw you sideways. Yeah, it would just go into a spin. Whee! those those two pedals down there the go and the clutch yeah. you let out the clutch and you go and uh this will, will and launch it you. is the greatest anti-theft device ever <laughs> i mean most car jackers just run away you know well, they yeah got, oh, they, yeah. Uh, yeah it's uh it's definitely a good one uh to have as a theft deterrent but uh it's funny though i'm 
you know, with some research that we've been looking at, it's it's funny though, you know, the younger generation is starting to realize that, you know, this is something that's kind of special and it's unique and right. they're kind of seeking after cars with this. That's why you've seen, you know, from a used car market perspective, you know, Miatas are very popular right. and, and the BRZ, FRS, and now the GT86 and the GR86. So, I mean, yeah, there's, there's kind of that growing sense of, you know, manuals are pretty cool. Yeah. And I love the rev matching. Yeah, it's it's really good. So that's something that we launched with the uh, the previous generation 370. And right. Although if you did want a heel toe, you can t turn yeah. it off. But you do need that halo car. I have to admit, I didn't have much interest in the Nissan until the GTR came out. It just seemed sort of like nice cars. Sure. You know, but there was nothing that that grabbed you. You know. But then that GTR kind of GTR, and then it got. It's so it's well over two hundred grand the last generation, wasn't it? Well, so we start just over a hundred for the the kind of entry level, so right. the premium GTR. But yeah, if you're looking for the Nismo or uh, you know a T spec, right. uh, those those will run you in the mid one fifties up to two ten, two fifteen. You know, I'm one of those people. <laughs> I, I like to if the gauge is that I like to read them all. You know, I know my temp my differential temperature is not that important, but I, well, I just want to know what it is right now. And now I have to go. Yeah. And, you know, I hate that I have to check. I like uh, all the all the kids. There you go. You got them all. All yeah. your telemetry on your yeah. sports grid right, right now. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how few two seater cars actually get sold percentage wise. Oh yeah. You know. I mean, it's what I love, but I realize I'm not the, you know. I remember when the DeLorean fell, but it's always, they, they were afraid it would, uh, you know, General Motors and Ford and Chrysler that open. No, they don't care. They, they don't sell enough cars to make any difference. Yeah. Yeah, the segment is, is kind of niche. It's, you know, it's definitely a unique buyer who goes and, and pursues one of these, and it's usually as a second car. It's never a, normally a primary, but. Right, of course, it's always a second car. And it's always, like when, uh, Alfa Romeo introduced the Julia. Yeah. I loved it. They let me drive one with the with the six speed manual. Oh, this is fabulous. And they, oh, we're not bringing that in here. Oh, what? <laughs> well, that's the only reason I'm here. I like yeah. Alfa Zones. And no, no. So they just did the Ameri They just did the automatic. Yeah. No, oh, the six speed would have been terrific in that. It's a gorgeous sedan. Nice handling car. I was impressed with it. But yeah, we're we're starting to see a little bit of a resurgence. You know, obviously that is dictated with the market. You know, and used car and new car values have skyrocketed. But um, we've definitely, since the the initiation of the pandemic, seen you know folks wanting to get back out and enjoying right. their drive instead of you know just having you know a commuter car that gets them to point A to point B. And so having something special like this is definitely starting to become top of mind for a lot of drivers. And that's a really cool thing to see. I don't even think you can put a kid seat. Oh, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, in in most cases. So eh, you you wouldn't want to. Let me rephrase yeah. that. But um, but again, though, you know, again, to have as a second car or to have something, you know, that you can go and take on a drive on your own. Right. To really kind of get out and be free, so to speak. This is a perfect car to do that in. And I don't think the original 240Z was ever available with air conditioning, was it? So that was actually, um, After uh, yeah, it was a dealer option. So you could get it with air conditioning. And so they would give you the compressor and the switch and the big box. It was like one third the price of the car. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I specifically remember seeing it not being very cheap. Uh, yeah, well, I remember back in the 60s, the air conditioning was like a $700 option. So if the car was $3,000, yeah, that's, that's almost a third. third yeah. yeah. Yeah, it puts it in perspective. Uh, but, you know, if you really wanted it, you'd have to shell out for it. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, the, the 240Z had the, the pull vents down at the bottom, so you'd right. pull the little trigger and you'd have, uh, you know, air flowing down into the floorboards, which would then uh, essentially keep that part of you cool. And then you could just turn the fan on and have hot air blow on you, but you could do my method of stick your hand out the window and cup it to try yeah, to- Yeah, that works, yeah, that works. <laughs> We've come a long way from the early 240Z, but this is still very much in its DNA. 
Well, I remember when it came out, how excited everybody was. It was like, had a little bit of XKE in it, a little bit of Corvette in it, you yep. know. Multiple, multiple carburetors, you know. Yeah, with 151 horsepower. Yeah. And the four speed with independent rear suspension. And you weighed under 3,000 pounds. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was the original four wheel this or drums at the back? I can't remember. So there's drums in the rear. Drums in the rear, that's yep. right. Disc yeah. up front. But honestly, for its weight and its power, it's pretty sufficient. But yeah. I will say, you know, spirited driving, rear discs is a, a must. Oh, you know, oh yeah, you got it. <laughs> of course. Of course. You know, young people, millennials don't even understand what brake fade is. It, it doesn't. What? You know. Yeah, what is that? I mean, they kind of get it, but they never experience it. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I have a 56, I got a couple of 56 Packers. That's got like eight inch drums on it. Oh, wow. You know, and one day I'm just going down Mulholland and I put my, it goes right to, I just oh. sail right through the stoplight. I go, jeez, and I pull over and pop it and let it cool. Yep. Oh, okay, there it goes. Go, there, geez. now we got some pedal pressure. Yeah, yep. really frightening. Yeah, yeah, brake fade is, is something that is very, very scary. Yeah, I know. Mean, slow down with it. To, to bring the car yeah. versus uh, your brakes, especially on you know some steep downhills and, and whatnot. Definitely using the engine to slow you. Yeah, the importance of brakes cannot be understated. <laughs> yeah, boy, I really like this thing. It is really a really enjoyable car to drive. It's exactly what it should be. Just the right amount of horsepower. I love you. Uh, I love to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah, we're just excited about this product, man. The, you know, the ZE has just been a staple for us for over 50 I'm years. I'm surprised it took so long to bring it back. Yeah, with you know the automotive industry the way it is, you know, obviously you know, we would have loved to have this next generation come out sooner, but you know we have to you know play due course and then just understand I mean, how best to. It's always amazing to me how the business changes. Yeah. I mean, the Corvair was a failure because they only sold 1.8 million. million. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, jeez. Yeah, but just to have a two-seat, rear-wheel drive, twin-turbo, yeah. six-speed car in today's yeah. age is... It's a good time to be an automotive enthusiast. Yeah. Especially with this being, you know, an ICE versus, you know, EV. Jonathan, thank you very much. Thanks for bringing this by. I really appreciate it. I'm real excited for sports cars because this, you know, the high-end stuff is great, but it doesn't move the, this moves the ball forward for the average guy. Yeah. And that's really what I think is really cool. Absolutely. I mean, attainable sports car and a lot of fun to drive. And it feels like just the right amount of horsepower. You know, everybody's in the 600 club now. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's, hundreds of thousands of dollars more money. Yeah. It's a, you know. It's a good balance, right? Yes. It's, it's a really good balance. For approximately 50 grand with all the performance options. Sure. Oh, I, don't, I don't think you can beat it. It's really impressive. Yeah, thank we're, you. yeah, no, thank you for having us. And this has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. I'm glad you were able to get behind the wheel and experience it firsthand. So yeah, thanks well, so much. We'll stop by the uh, Heritage Center next time we're in Nashville. Yeah, come by Is and see Is that open us. to the public? Unfortunately, no. Oh, uh, okay. But, uh, you know, we uh, we do facilitate tours. Yeah. So um, when well, the timing really is right. Cool. Well, thank you very much, my no friend. No problem. Thank you Appreciate so much. It. Appreciate yes, it. Hey, see you guys next week. <laughs>